The full stack is back, but for how long? Ships, boosters, test tanks and more have been rolling, testing and getting ready. And furthermore, Star Factory is really making progress in this week's Starbase update. Let's start at the production site. We saw Starship 31 doing a quick little spin in the high bay before it continued assembly. This is usually done so the welding robots can access all areas of the ship. However, it is interesting to see it before the stacking and not after. Following that spin, the ship was stacked on top of the mid liquid oxygen rings. It is not yet fully complete, but Ship 31 is closing in on being fully stacked rapidly. The current fleet has Ship 25 and 26 at the launch site and Ship 28, 29, 30 and 31 in either very advanced testing or advanced production. That's quite a few ships. At this stage, Star Factory is truly making a significant impact on the Starbase skyline. The colossal structure has nearly covered the entire site with ongoing efforts to add cladding to its walls and roof. One can't help but notice the construction of the taller section of the factory, which is likely where they'll carry out nose cone work in the future. It certainly explains the lofty ceiling. At the Massey's test site, preparations are underway for the next ship to undergo testing. The ship currently on the stand is Ship 29. After it completes its testing phase, it will likely return to the rocket garden and take the place of Ship 28 on the elevated stand designated for Raptor installation. During the night, we observed the transportation of potential crane components to the launch site, though their exact purpose remains unclear. These components could be intended for either the replacement or modification of the local cranes at the launch site. We will need to wait and see what actually happens to gain a clearer understanding. The crane parts were transported to the pad using self-propelled modular transporters, often abbreviated to SPMTs, and in these images you can truly appreciate the immense size of these crane components. As a general practice, SpaceX has developed a tendency to transport large objects at night in Boca Chica. This isn't limited solely to ships and boosters. Even smaller items moving from the production site to the launch site have been moved during the nighttime hours. It's possible that SpaceX is optimizing its workflow, aiming to minimize disruption to daytime operations by conducting these movements at night. Movements such as these additional components likely associated with the previously mentioned crane parts that have been relocated to the launch site. The following morning, the Lieber LR11000 crane was set in motion to lift and secure the lifting jig. Now, why is this a thrilling development? It's significant because this action is a crucial step in raising the hot stage ring and restoring Booster 9 to its former glory, complete with its crown. This was indeed the initial indication that SpaceX was embarking on a process of reassembling various components, commencing with the hot staging ring. The lifting rig was then moved over and attached to the hot staging ring for lifting. Meanwhile, workers began the process of dismantling the scaffolding surrounding the ship quick disconnect. This scaffolding had primarily served as a means to access the forward dome of the booster section and its removal coincided with the return of the hot staging ring. This may have been the primary reason for its removal, but it's possible that the removal wasn't directly linked to the ring itself. In fact, both scenarios could be true. It's conceivable that work was carried out on both the hot staging ring and the forward dome. Unfortunately, we lacked visual confirmation of any work taking place on the hot stage ring once it was removed, leaving us unable to definitively confirm or deny any activity on it. The ship QD work platform then also retracted to increase space in the area for hot staging ring installation. The hot stage ring was then lifted onto Booster 9 using the lifting rig. If you're new to the Starship program, a hot staging ring serves a crucial role for the booster. It enables the ship's engines to ignite while the ship and booster remain connected. The ring serves a dual purpose by providing protection to the booster and creating outlets for the engine exhaust to disperse. This design aims to minimize the time interval between engine firings and, consequently, reduce the loss of momentum due to gravity. This entire maneuver also substantiated another key point. The return of Booster 9 to the production site a few weeks ago was not related to the installation of the hot staging ring. SpaceX has clearly demonstrated their ability to install the ring at the launch site. Therefore, it is highly probable that the earlier move to the production site was driven by different considerations or purposes. 
Subsequently, the lifting rig was disconnected from the ring and it was promptly installed atop Booster 9 without encountering significant delays or complications. After completing its task and considering that it cannot assist during full stack operations, the LR11000 crane was then relocated to its customary storage location at the suborbital launch site. Let's take a quick detour back to Massey's. In the evening hours of the day, Ship 29 underwent cryogenic testing. After SpaceX finished its procedures and left the site, observers noticed the appearance of venting and the telltale white frost line, indicating that the next ship was undergoing structural testing prior to engine installation. Also at Massey's, a component of Ship 27 was relocated as SpaceX was in the process of preparing it for structural testing within the testing rig. It appears that SpaceX might be considering the utilization of this spare part for additional testing as it will no longer be required for any flight-related hardware. Speaking of ships, it was time for the return of the full stack. Ship 25 had already been positioned between the chopsticks, so the next steps involved attaching the stabilizers, lifting it vertically, and performing some lateral maneuvers during the ascent before settling it onto Booster 9. These sideward movements puzzled some of our commentators, one of them being me, as they appeared somewhat counterintuitive, departing from a straightforward vertical trajectory. However, it's likely that SpaceX has valid reasons for these unusual chopstick movements. Side note, this is unlikely to be the final stacking operation for Ship 25. It seems that the flight termination system has not been installed or armed. Therefore, following the usual procedure, SpaceX will likely need to disassemble it once more, arm the FTS on both the ship and the booster, and then proceed with the final stacking. This is necessary because the FTS area on the ship is not accessible when fully stacked due to its height. The ship's quick disconnect arm was relocated during the stacking process and subsequently attached to Ship 25 once it was in its designated position. This arm not only contributes to the overall stability of the setup, but also exerts pressure on the ship to enhance its stability further. You can think of this in a manner akin to a sealed soda can. While it still contains pressure, it is much more resilient to denting compared to when it's been opened. Currently, there is uncertainty regarding the exact plans for the full stack, as no notices or road closures have been posted to provide details. However, it appears probable that SpaceX will undertake a full stack cryogenic test or wet dress rehearsal to thoroughly prepare it for a flight. This is particularly significant since, up to this point, no comprehensive testing of the second stack in its entirety has been conducted. Another round of late night activities took place as the Ship 24.2 test tank was transported to Massey's, where it was placed on a stand for testing purposes. Typically, these test tanks serve to validate modifications in hardware before they are incorporated into the full ships or boosters. It's highly likely that this is the same objective in this instance as well. The move to Massey's was carried out during the nighttime hours, and now this hardware joins Ship 29 and the testing equipment within the testing rig. SpaceX has been actively utilizing Massey's for various purposes lately. On a personal note, it does seem like we're talking about the site much more often than we used to. Here, you can observe that the tank has already been positioned atop its testing stand. The process that will take place involves the SPMT lowering itself sufficiently to place the stand on the ground, allowing it to drive away from underneath. This eliminates the necessity for a crane to hoist and position objects, which is quite a clever and efficient approach. So what are your thoughts? Will the full stack undergo a complete wet dress rehearsal, or will it opt for a cryogenic test, or perhaps even consider skipping these tests altogether, or has SpaceX just put it on the pad so we can take pretty photos? Feel free to share your opinions down below. I'm Ryan Caton for NSF, thanks for watching, and goodbye.